Ever wondered what it means to own a piece of a company? That's what buying a stock is all about. Imagine walking into an Apple store, not to buy the latest iPhone, but to buy a piece of Apple itself. That's essentially what you're doing when you buy a stock. You're purchasing a small slice of a company, becoming a part owner, and getting a share of its future profits. So, why do companies issue stocks? Well, it's a way for them to raise money without taking on debt. They sell pieces of ownership to the public, and the money they receive can be used to grow and expand the business. It's a win-win for both the company and the investor. The company gets the funds it needs, and the investor gets a chance to share in the company's success. Now, you may be wondering where do you go to buy these stocks? The answer is the stock market. It's a virtual marketplace where buyers and sellers come together to trade stocks. The price of each stock fluctuates throughout the trading day based on supply and demand. If more people want to buy a stock than sell it, the price goes up. If more people want to sell a stock than buy it, the price goes down. But remember, buying a stock doesn't mean you can walk into a company's headquarters and start making decisions. As a small shareholder, you won't have much say in how the company is run. But, you will have the right to vote on certain issues and receive dividends, which are a portion of the company's profits distributed to shareholders. So, in essence, buying a stock means buying a piece of a company's future profits and growth. It's an exciting journey, and while it comes with risks, the potential rewards can be substantial. Whether you're an aspiring investor or simply curious about the financial world, understanding stocks is a vital first step on your path to financial literacy. The stock market is a bustling ecosystem with different players, who are they? Let's find out. Imagine the market is a bustling city, and the investors, traders and market makers are its inhabitants, each playing a unique role. Investors are like long-term residents. They buy shares in companies they believe will grow over time, hoping to profit from dividends and share price increases. Traders on the other hand are more like tourists. They buy and sell stocks frequently, hoping to make a quick profit from short-term price fluctuations. Then there are the market makers. They're akin to the city's infrastructure, acting as intermediaries between buyers and sellers. They buy when no one else is buying and sell when no one else is selling, providing liquidity and stability to the market. So there you have it. The stock market is a dynamic world, with each player contributing to its ebb and flow. Remember, whether you're an investor, trader, or market maker, each role has its unique set of opportunities and challenges. Ever heard of the terms bull and bear markets? They're not about wildlife, but they do signify a wild ride in the stock market. Picture this, a bull, charging with full force, driving its horns up in the air. This is the essence of a bull market, where optimism, investor confidence, and a strong economy are the order of the day. Prices are on the rise and everyone's in a buying mood. It's a time of plenty, a season of growth. Now imagine a bear, swiping its paw downward. This mirrors a bear market. A time when investor confidence takes a nosedive and economic outlook seems gloomy. Prices plummet, and the market is awash with selling. It's a time of scarcity, a season of contraction. But why should you care about these market trends? Well, they're like the weather forecast for investors. Just as you'd dress differently for a sunny day versus a rainy day, you'd also adjust your investment strategies based on whether it's a bull or a bear market. In a bull market, you might lean towards buying stocks expecting them to increase in value. It's like planting seeds in the spring, hoping to reap the rewards in the summer. On the flip side, in a bear market, you might consider selling off your stocks to prevent further losses. Or you could choose to hold on to them, weathering the storm until the market recovers. It's like battening down the hatches in a storm, waiting for clearer skies. But remember, markets are cyclical, what goes up must come down, and vice versa. Bulls give way to bears, and bears to bulls. The key is to stay informed, keep a cool head, and adapt your strategies according to the market's ebb and flow. Whether the bulls or bears are in charge, savvy investors know how to adapt their strategies to make the most of the market conditions. Investing in stocks isn't a game of chance, it requires a solid strategy. Now let's delve into the world of investment strategies. There are numerous approaches to investing, each with its unique philosophy and methodology. However, we'll focus on three popular strategies today, value investing, growth investing, and dividend investing. Let's start with value investing. This strategy is all about hunting for deals. It involves seeking out stocks that are undervalued by the market. Value investors believe that the market often overreacts to good and bad news, resulting in stock price movements that don't correspond with a company's long-term fundamentals. 
The goal is to profit when the price is corrected. Think of it as shopping for bargains in the stock market. Next up, we have growth investing. This strategy focuses on investing in companies that exhibit signs of above average growth, even if the stock price appears expensive in terms of metrics such as price to earnings or price to book ratios. Growth investors bank on the premise that these companies will continue to increase their earnings at an above average rate, and the stock price will follow suit. Lastly, there's dividend investing. This strategy involves investing in companies that regularly pay dividends. Dividends are a portion of a company's earnings paid out to shareholders. For dividend investors, it's all about generating a steady income stream. This strategy is particularly appealing to those seeking stable returns like retirees. Choosing the right investment strategy depends largely on your financial goals and risk tolerance. Are you looking for long-term capital appreciation? Then growth investing might be your game. Are you after regular income? Dividend investing could be your go-to strategy. Or, if you're a bargain hunter at heart, value investing could be right up your alley. Regardless of the strategy you choose, remember that patience and discipline are key to successful investing. It's not about timing the market, but time in the market that counts. And remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither will your investment portfolio. It's a journey, not a sprint. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. In the world of investing, higher potential rewards often come with higher risks. This is a fundamental principle that guides the decisions of countless investors. It's a delicate dance, a balancing act that requires a keen understanding of the market's rhythm and a willingness to adapt when the beat changes. Risk is an inherent part of investing. There's no such thing as a sure bet. Every investment carries its own set of potentials and pitfalls. You might invest in a promising startup only to see it struggle in a saturated market. Or you may place your faith in a blue chip company, but unforeseen circumstances could cause its stock value to plummet. On the flip side, reward is the reason why we invest. It's the prospect of your money growing over time, of your investments bearing fruit. It's the exhilarating feeling of seeing a stock you invested in soar, and the satisfaction of knowing your research and analysis paid off. So how do we balance these two elements? How do we navigate the precarious path between risk and reward? One way is through diversification. By spreading your investments across a variety of assets, you can mitigate the impact of any single investment's poor performance. Think of it as not putting all your eggs in one basket. If one investment fails, it's unlikely to sink your entire portfolio. Another strategy is asset allocation. This involves dividing your investments among different asset classes like stocks, bonds, and real estate, according to your risk tolerance, investment objectives, and time horizon. Asset allocation can help you achieve a favorable balance between risk and reward by ensuring your portfolio aligns with your investment goals and risk tolerance. These strategies aren't foolproof, nothing is in investing, but they can help you manage risk, enhance potential rewards, and give you a better shot at achieving your investment goals. Balancing risk and reward is an art, and mastering it can set you on the path to successful investing. Remember, the most successful investors are not those who avoid risk entirely, but those who understand it, manage it, and make it work to their advantage. Now that we've broken down the complex world of the stock market, it's time for you to take the next step. This journey may be filled with excitement, uncertainty, and even a bit of fear. But remember that every successful investor started somewhere. The essential lessons we've covered today, understanding stocks, recognizing the key players, deciphering market trends, exploring investment strategies, and balancing risk with reward, provide a solid foundation for your investment journey. But don't stop here. Keep exploring, keep learning. The stock market is a vast ocean of opportunities waiting to be harnessed. It's an arena where patience, knowledge, and strategic decision-making can lead to significant financial growth over time. Whether you're dreaming of early retirement, planning your next adventure, or simply aiming to build wealth, the stock market can be your ticket to financial freedom. Remember, the stock market isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. It's a powerful tool that, when used wisely, can help you achieve your financial goals.